In this video, I'll derive the equations of motion for the two degree of freedom system shown in the figure. It consists of an inverted pendulum riding on top of a cart. The cart has mass capital M and rides along a frictionless horizontal surface. An external force F is applied to the cart in the X direction. The pendulum has mass little m and is attached to the cart by a massless rigid rod of length L. The pendulum is rotated from the vertical by an amount theta, which is defined to be positive in the counterclockwise direction. Uh, gravity is present as shown by the gray gravity vector. And I should mention at the outset <clears throat> that this video will focus on the structural modeling of this system and deriving the equations of motion using Lagrange's equation. This is not a video on controls and control systems. There are many videos out there that show you how to keep this pendulum in an upright position, but all of them reference a structural model, which is the first step you need in controlling any problem. Uh, the controls people seem to think that the structural modeling is the hard part. I disagree, and hopefully you will too by the end of this video. So, moving forward, the first thing that we need to do is locate the position of each of the masses. Well, mass M the big M, is just at a position X, based on how we've drawn the axes. Right? The little M is a little bit more involved, but not much. And what we do is start off by writing our kinematics, or kinematical constraints. Kinematics. And what the kinematics do is uh, try to locate the mass based on the coordinates given in the problem, the coordinates and the coordinate systems. So the first thing we do is say that the x position of the mass, and I'll call it x sub little m, let's just say this position here is x sub m, y sub m, okay? And x sub m is equal to x, the position of the cart, minus this part here, okay? So it's minus L sine theta. And ym is just L times cosine theta. Oops. L cosine of theta. Call this equation 1 and equation 2. Now, in order to find the velocity uh, in each of these directions, I can just take the time derivative of xm and ym, respectively. So, this would imply that xm dot, the velocity in the x direction, is equal to, taking the time derivative, x dot minus L theta dot cosine of theta. I remind you I'm taking the derivative with respect to time and not with respect to theta, which is why we get this theta dot here. And then we can write y dot m, which is equal to negative L theta dot theta dot times sine of theta. Okay, and we'll call these equations 3 and 4. Okay, so in order to use Lagrange's equations to find the equations of motion, we need to find the kinetic and potential energies of the system. So I'm going to find the potential energy first because it's dead simple. Potential energy, let's write it out, Poten potential energy, which we'll call V, and V is just equal to M times G, M little m times G times the height of the pendulum. We assume that the cart is at zero potential energy, and the only potential energy in the system is due to the height of this pendulum bob, which would be M times G times Y sub M, which from this equation here, equation two, we can substitute to get M g l cosine of theta. Call that number 5. Okay, and for the kinetic energy, I'm going to do this in blue. The kinetic energy, do it down here. Okay, 
and the kinetic energy we call T, capital T, and that is a half mv squared of each of the masses. So if we look at the cart, it's one half times capital M times x dot, the velocity of the cart squared, plus one half times little m times the velocity of the pendulum squared, which can be written as x dot m squared plus y dot m squared. The square of the velocity is found by squaring each of the components. And this is equal to uh, 1 half mx dot squared plus 1 half little m into... Now I've got to square the velocity, so substitute and square. Here are the velocities. I plug that into the equation and I square it. I'm going to do that all in one step. And I end up with an x dot squared minus 2L theta dot x dot cosine of theta comes from multiplying this to this times 2. And then uh, this term squared would give me plus L squared theta dot squared uh, and we can group these because I get the same from each of these but a cosine squared and a sine squared are different. So let me write it out. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Alright, well this is just a trig identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared of an angle is just one. And I'm going to keep the blue color. Writing it out in full is now t equals one half. Uh, let's group it like this. m plus m x dot squared plus one half m l squared theta dot squared minus m l theta dot x dot cosine of theta. And that is the expression for kinetic energy. We will call this equation 6. Now that we have expressions for the potential and kinetic energy, we can go ahead and find the equations of motion using Lagrange's equations. And I've gone ahead and written down Lagrange's equations just to save a little bit of time. Uh, continuing our numbering system, this will be equation 7. Uh, the quantity L is known as the Lagrangian, and that is very simply calculated as the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. Call that equation 8. And then we can just go back here and substitute the expressions, equations 5 and 6, the expressions into equation 8 to get that L. Hold on, L is equal to, and I'm going to try to preserve the color here, one half, this comes from the kinetic energy, m plus little m x dot squared plus one half m l squared theta dot squared minus m l theta dot x dot cosine of theta, and then from the potential energy, we'll do this green minus mgl cosine of theta, and we'll call this equation 9. And now all we need to do is substitute equation 9 into equation 7 and for each of the coordinates. Uh, so let's do that. Equations of motion. Okay. Um, so the first equation of motion will be the one in the x direction. And according to Lagrange's equations, we need to take the derivative of L with respect to x dot. So the only two terms that have x dot explicitly are these two terms. We take the time derivative of that. So m plus m. The half cancels the two. I end up with an x dot. The time derivative of that gives me a double dot. And then minus, 
I'm going to take the derivative of this by using the, the uh, product rule. So it would be the x dot cancels, ml uh, would be theta double dot. Cosine of theta. Plus, plus becomes a minus, minus ml theta dot dot squared. Okay, the derivative of this with respect to x gives me ml theta dot cosine of theta. And I take the derivative with time. First part is I take the derivative on the theta, and then I take the derivative of the cosine part, which gives me minus sine theta times theta dot, which is why I have a squared here. Okay, that's a mouthful, but it's correct. Um, equals, and in this case, we've got a force. This is just the applied force F of T. Right, and let me write this all out now and expand it, and I'll write it in black. Uh, M plus M times X double dot minus M L theta double dot cosine theta minus minus gives me a positive M L theta dot squared sine of theta. That's equal to f of t. And that is your first equation of motion. Uh, we'll call this equation 10. Okay. So for our second equation of motion, we do the same thing now, but with respect to theta. So let me write that we're dealing with the theta coordinate now. And I'm going to try and preserve the colors again. So if I take the derivative with respect to theta dot, these two terms survive. Okay, and then I've got to take the time derivative of that. So the first term gives me ml squared, the two cancels the half theta dot, time derivative of that is theta double dot, ml squared theta double dot, minus uh, ml x double dot, Oops. Cosine of theta. Hmm. Okay. Cosine of theta plus, well, I'm going to get M L X dot theta dot sine of theta. So just to be clear, when I take the derivative of this with respect to theta dot, and then with respect to time, I get the last two terms I've written. And now I've got to subtract from that dl dq. Okay. In the first case, in the first equation of motion, there was no contribution here because none of these equations rely explicitly on x. In this case, we're going to get something that looks like minus ml, theta dot, x dot, sine of theta. Okay, so that comes from here, taking the derivative with respect to theta. And then finally, I'm going to take the derivative with that with respect to theta. And a reminder again to put a negative sign ahead of it. And let me write it like this just to save space. Minus m g l sine of theta. And that's equal to zero, since there's no external moment. Do that. Okay, that term will cancel with that term. The one is just the positive of the other. And now, if I divide each term by ml, since each term has ml in it, let me write that, divide. Then I end up with, only one of the l's survives, l theta double dot, and lo and behold, this is my second equation of motion. Let's put a red box around that. 
these are the equations of motion. Uh, that's really all I want to say about this video. I hope you now think it's actually pretty simple to model this inverted pendulum. Uh, I hope you found something useful in this video. If you have, please go ahead and smash those like buttons so other people can get to see it too. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch up with you in the next video.